the south and east of Augusta. All right, so let's track this rain out of here. Charlotte, I know it is just torrential rain. We are in this for the next hour or two. And then once we get past lunchtime, we actually start to move in the dry air. Uh, we're going to be watching, though, the rain sit around all day across a lot of central and eastern North Carolina. Look at Wilmington. Look at Cape Hatteras. Um, we're going to be watching this rain with big rainfall rates because remember, there's tropical moisture coming up in here and we have that front coming through as well. So when you have the two of those combining, it just gives you uh, tremendous potential for big rainfall. There's a lot of moisture in the atmosphere, much more than you would normally see this time of year. So the top of the charts kind of thing, likely flash flooding Raleigh in the Triangle area, Greenville down to Fayetteville and Florence. I-95 runs right through here. There were some closures last Last night at Wilson on I-95, that could happen again today here in other spots. So we're going to be watching for that risk, even on interstates with this kind of flooding. Here's how much rain is yet to come. A widespread three to five inches, some places locally getting five to eight additional inches of rainfall. All right, Steph, let's talk more about what's happening in Tampa. Yeah, I mean, Ada just swamping uh, Tampa the past 24 hours. We reached uh, over 3.8 feet water rise at the old port in Tampa, the highest level of surge in this area since 1991. Roads near the Courtney Campbell Causeway still overrun with water this morning, though that is improving. At the airport, over four inches of rain. We want to go back to Jim and Jim. You know, I spoke with some of my uh, friends, born and raised in Florida, so I you know, have some friends that are, are still there. And uh, they were saying we've never seen the water rise like this uh, in Tampa. And that's because oh, no, we just... Yeah, I'm sorry, Steph. I just I couldn't hear what you were throwing it with, oh, to me right. because somebody drove by and was honking. So I apologize. Uh, if you want to, if you want to just ask me again. Yeah, go no ahead. worries. Just atypical, you know. To see, people haven't seen, don't typically see the water rise like this because we don't get a lot of tropical no. entities on the west coast like this. No, we don't. I mean, Tampa Bay, for the most part, for dozens of years, has dodged big hurricanes. All right. Uh, imagine if it was a cat two, coming up with the same path. All right. It would be a whole different story here. Uh, certainly from where I'm standing in, it would be a big story for the homes. And Steph, you remember when we came to you literally 45 minutes ago, there was still some water uh, left on Bayshore Boulevard. Now look at it. It's pretty much drained. There's cars coming in both directions, even though the police are still blocking off some of that. But I want to take you back. This is what we this is what we came on yesterday. I want to take you back yesterday, show you these video pictures. Uh, this was right here uh, off Biscayne Boulevard. I, we got, I got out on the way to our hotel and I took these, this video like a wash tub out there like a wash tub out there, okay? And now I want you to see what that water looks like, okay? Big, big difference when you don't have 30 uh, mile per hour winds with higher gusts just pushing that water in and creating that wash tub signature. And folks are out just kind of doing what they would normally do. So the water a lot calmer, the water's coming down. I would imagine it would too. Um, especially especially in places where it's still high on, on the Courtney Campbell. All right, Steph, unfortunately, big problems well away from the center yeah. of Ada this morning. It does. I mean, this moisture, listen, banging up with a front. When you combine tropical moisture with a front, it's it's not good because a front acts like a sponge. Are you maybe cleaning your dishes this morning and wringing out your sponge? That's what this front is doing. So there we go. I was just saying what moments ago, I would not be surprised if a flash flood warning was issued because we're seeing very heavy rainfall rates. This line has a history of producing over eight inches of rain in a 24 hour period. It's still cranking it out. It doesn't look like anything's going to stop it here. And the rain is still, you know, coming down and it's going to for the next several hours. So what does a flash flood warning mean? That means that flash flooding is imminent or it's occurring. Do not drive through any of those high water. Waters. This will take a while to get through. We do have that flash flood warning at least till 11 o'clock. It could be extended from there. Rock Hill, Charlotte, uh, up 85. We are seeing that heavy rain. Hey, my night on the Weather Channel, starting at 8, Storm Stories, the next chapter, followed by back-to-back -back episodes of Weather Gone Viral.
In our continuing coverage of Tropical Storm, Ada now down to a 45 mile per hour tropical storm. But the damage is done with a tropical storm here in the Tampa Bay area. We had high water, especially uh, on you know many of the roadways that are you know up against the Tampa Bay area, the 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 causeway, the bridge, things like that. Also, as a result of high water being shut down, so the airport hopes to get fully operational by noon time today. But let's get an update on just how Tampa Bay fared. I want to bring in Tampa Mayor uh, via Skype, uh, Jane Castor. Mayor Castor, thanks for taking the time for us this morning. Uh, how has your city fared with Ada? Mayor Castor, can you hear me? Okay. Un unfortunately, unfortunately, we, we we lost communications with the mayor. I want to uh, interview uh, a couple of folks that are dealing with uh, debris cleanup this morning. This is Joyce Taywill and David Bruck. They are the homeowners here. Uh, I mentioned this earlier. If you're watching us, how they just moved in on Monday. So, uh, welcome. Uh, is this your welcome present? From welcome uh, what's up with that? We got all this for free from. You got, <laughs> got a, a present from the bay. And what's this? Is you moved um, up the bay a little bit, closer, I closer lived, to the city? I, we lived before about a mile, down, about a mile down, down the street, right off of Fred Ball Park, and I anticipate this in my parking garage underneath. So, does it shock you in the fact that this was? essentially a, a, a 65 mile per hour tropical storm that caused the debris to come from the bay no, all the way up into your street. All. This street floods if it's just the most minuscule rainstorm. No, but it, it shocked me because you know, when you buy a house and you, you're thinking it's 11 feet above mean sea level and that's what they say that you need to be and the fact that the water was past our yard to the middle of the driveway, middle yeah. of the sidewalk. Have you guys ever had that measured? Because the the, yeah. the the storm surge was 3.87 feet. Well, uh, so well, that rose not only above the seawall right, there right, on right, the boulevard, right but there, right there, we're at uh, seven and a half feet. Okay, so the good news is you have steps, so there's that's going to yeah. buy you another three and a half, yeah. four feet, right? right. Um, but if we would have, you're right. If we would have had like a six foot storm surge, water probably would have. Yeah, it would, it would have been a whole different situation yeah. through totally. here. So, totally. I'm glad that didn't happen. Um, I'm sorry you got to clean up this mess here this morning. Well, the city is coming. I'm hoping the city the helps us out. Come. I mean, actually, come. that's a good question. I mean, because you have had uh, tropical storms in the past, and some of it in recent history. Yes. Um, and even though you may have not been here, have you seen them respond pretty quickly? Yes. Public yes. Works the, and things the like that. Public works trucks usually come through very quickly because. Yeah, that's a hazard. That's a hazard to, right. plus, you know, plus, people. Plus, with today's stuff, it's, you know, uh, the chances are that there's something maybe in this. I don't know. I don't want to touch anything. But yeah, that's it's, actually a, a, a valid point, to David, to be honest with you. You, you kind of wonder what's what's yeah. come in. Um, it floats in from the bay. Well, that's why, they, that's why they make the hazmat suits, sweepers. right, guys? And the, the street sweepers <laughs> were just here this week. Oh, he, even, he even said in the morning, he goes, wow, the street sweepers have been up and down the street today. This uh, is really great. And everything was like pristine. All right. Here we are. Uh, David and Joyce, thank you for taking the time to, uh, to talk yeah, to us thank this you. morning. Yeah. Uh, good good luck with the cleanup in through yeah. here. Hopefully they'll, they'll come through today yeah. and, and, and help you out there. Uh, again, Steph, you can see as far as we yeah, are, actually, Brad, pan down there. You can see how far we are. Uh, yeah. From the boulevard and the bay, and how far the water came up. It doesn't take much, certainly, even with a no. tropical storm. So, Tampa Bay, let that be a word to you in terms of uh, what we could see, certainly with a, with a bona fide hurricane here. Yeah, Jim, we just heard from some residents. Thanks to you, we now have the mayor back with us. Uh, mayor Jane Castor is joining us, of course, the mayor of Tampa. Uh, mayor, thank you for being with us this morning. We heard from uh, those residents that were there right along the bay with some debris. Have you seen any widespread damage or problems in Tampa? Uh, well, first of all, uh, we have much, much more wonderful uh, welcome gifts than a tropical storm for that family. So we will certainly follow up on that. But yes, we have seen flooding, especially along the along the Bay Shore, uh, Courtney Campbell Causeway. Those locations, when there is a storm surge, it's difficult to control those bay waters. But we have made uh, great strides in our mitigation, stormwater mitigation, over the last couple of years. So our flooding has been uh, reduced dramatically, but there still are areas, some debris, some road closures, but nothing like we expected had we had a, uh, a full hit from the storm. So, Mayor, what is the plan for the day with the cleanup? 
Well, the plan for the day, as soon as the sun came up, uh, we were out there assessing. Our first responders have been out all night long, uh, blocking off any roadways that uh, needed blocking because of the, the storm surge. Also, any tree limbs that are down, uh, we had very, very minor electrical outlets that were fixed, uh, um, outages that were fixed immediately. And so we're assessing, we've got our teams on the ground and we're gonna get everything cleaned back up and uh, around noon, you won't even know a storm came through. In 30 seconds, what do you want the residents to know this morning? Well, the same thing that I always want them to know. One, be prepared and that these storms are incredibly unpredictable, as we saw with uh, Tropical Storm Ada. So be prepared and we will all get through these storms together. All right, Tampa Mayor Jane Castor, we certainly appreciate you uh, coming on this morning. And uh, Ada continues to wind across the state, bringing rain. We want to take you into the southeast, Boone, North Carolina, seeing very heavy rain and foggy conditions. Hey, just just And this morning, Tropical Storm Ada continues to leash out across much of the eastern United States here. Uh, of course, here in Florida, we had heavy rain, gusty winds, storm surge, some of it as high as almost four feet on the northern side of Tampa Bay here. And of course, you can see behind me here how far some of that debris has come up uh, from the Tampa Bay. This is about probably 60 yards, 60, 70 yards from the actual bay itself. Reynolds Wolf, also live uh, in Clearwater Beach. We will talk to him to see how things are going there, uh, where obviously, you know, the barrier islands have taken a hit. We are hearing about flooding in homes in places like Longboat Key. So that's south down towards Sarasota. Hopefully that airport gets operational, as does Tampa International by noon today. They want to be fully operational. They're operational, but in terms of fully operational, they're hoping by noontime today. Welcome to our continuing coverage of Tropical Storm Ada, Ada here on AMHQ. You thought we'd be done with this one, right? And we wouldn't be uh, dealing with a stronger storm. But, of course, this thing decided to have a mind of its own a couple of days ago and intensify again and then the trough picks it up and pushes it up toward Tampa Bay. So that's the situation that we are in this morning. A lot of the flooding, Stephanie, that we've seen uh, on places like Bayshore Boulevard, which is what I was on, has gone down to the point where it is drivable. We are seeing a lot of cars uh, now on Bayshore Boulevard. But as I mentioned, this isn't just a Florida storm. No. The fact that it's caught up in a deep trough means a lot of that moisture is being carried several states to our northeast. Huge issues in North Carolina. We're going to get to that in just a second. And we'll also get back to Jim. I don't know if you could see behind him. You can see actually the debris line. I could see it on the street of how far the water came up that street. And he'll be able to give us a whole tour of that neighborhood coming up. So here's a look. We had landfall uh, near the Cedar Key area as a tropical storm with this system. All the rain on the east side, dry air on the west side. There are your showers. You see that counterclockwise spin. There's our center right there. And it's going to continue to quickly race across the state. A few gusty winds. Uh, but they are definitely coming down. Earlier this morning, we started on air at 5 a.m. We were seeing our gusts still 20, 30 mile per hour range. Those have come down. The water's all coming down. We set records. And remember, when you have that onshore push, that's what makes the water rise. And then it's all squeezing into this little bay area. And that's what exacerbates the situation. On top of that, you've got the rain that's coming down. And so we had five to eight inches of rain in some areas around the Tampa Bay area. We also had gusty wind. 66 miles an hour is the biggest wind gust that I saw that was in Beverly Hills, Florida. That's north of the Tampa area. Still breezy right around that low. So you see how Tampa is now removed from that center of circulation. That's why our winds have gone down. We have a gust here, St. Augustine. We're talking on the east coast of Florida at a 41 miles an hour. Leesburg, 44 miles an hour. And as we take you into a Jacksonville Forest here, it's the first coast. There are your showers. There's your gusts. 46 miles an hour. Listen, you could lose power with some of these gustier winds here. Uh, a tree can come down on that or just, you know, debris maybe could hit a power line. So that's something to think about. Let's go back to Jim and he can show us what it looks like in this community and how much cleanup they have to do, Jim. Did you see any trees down uh, as you were moving around yep. this morning or is it more palm fronds? 
Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of yards that have debris. I mean, everything that was floating on top of Tampa Bay pretty much came in here. I want to pass something along. Uh, we just got got word out of this. Um, my producer got word out of this. Tampa uh, Bay, you know, Tampa International, first commercial flight scheduled for 9 a.m. this morning, by the way. Uh, and they are saying that they are going to open earlier than planned, okay? Uh, as a result of it, air cargo is resuming normal operations, and our first passenger flight will depart at 9 a.m. So things are getting back uh, up and running, obviously, with the fact that we really have no influence at all at this point from ADA, except for the debris that's left over. So, Steph, you asked. Here we are. Um, again, I'm going to say mm, a good 70 yards from the bay right here. You can see where David's cleaning up uh, the debris from his yard. They were quite shocked. They moved into this place on Monday. I don't know if you saw the interview we just did a little while ago, guys, but I want to show you again back out toward Bayshore Boulevard, okay, which is now clear. When we got here, it was underwater. All right, and then you can see, of course, the Gulf of Mexico and the obviously Tampa Bay behind that. So yesterday we dealt with all day southwest winds, pushing that water, pushing that water, pushing that water in. Then about 9, 10 o'clock last night, we started getting water overriding and coming onto Bay Shore. It peaked overnight and then started coming down this morning uh, when we started our live coverage at 4 a.m. But that's the, I and mean, think about this. And, and, um, and you heard David earlier, if you're watching the interview, he was shocked this was only a tropical storm. Look how high the water got here in Tampa Bay just with a tropical storm. So imagine a Cat 1 or a Cat 2 or a Cat 3, which we really, really haven't been tested with um, here in this area for a long time. So something to watch, uh, guys, going down the road, Tampa Bay. But thank goodness here uh, we, we dodged this one, Steph. But unfortunately, others are not so lucky. Not so lucky at all. All right, let's take you down to our Clearwater Beach. Again, Reynolds, we can see how things have come and gone here with Ada, uh, obviously on, on Bayshore Boulevard. How about Clearwater Beach? Any, any signs of erosion, debris, things like that? Uh, not much, not much. I mean, this is considered one of America's top beaches. It's two and a half miles of what was pristine beaches. But you'll notice here some of the grasses have been piled up. The waves really are a mess. The water, which at times is relatively clear, certainly not the case right now. It certainly has been kicked up by the wind. The wind has dropped considerably. The air feels much drier. And the skies, you'll notice a patchwork of grace and blue here and there. So things are improving. Now, that is not to say that things were not rough earlier. We did have some heavy rain, but the brunt of it really... I'd say between 9 o'clock last night and maybe 1 o'clock this morning, there was some flooding in the area. There was, uh, let's see, reports of a of water rescues in a trailer park in Pinellas County around 12.06 this morning. So first responders went there, did the great job, and rescued some folks. And uh, I'll tell you right now, the big story is the water doing the opposite, not rising, but beginning to fall back. And with it, you've got, again, a lot of debris in a lot of places. A lot of roads have been covered up by branches from the wind that came on through. So today is the time of cleanup. If you want a silver lining, and there is some sunshine to be had, that is that we didn't have a single power outage reported here in Pinellas County. That being said, though, there are other parts around the state, some 15,000 customers without power at this point. But you know, Jen, as it goes, that's not something that can be remedied quickly. It's going to take some patience, take some time, and hard work by a lot of men and women doing what they can to help others. Now, the story is also that we're going to see more of these problems not here. The story does not begin or end just at the water's edge, but it's going to continue through much of the state, eventually moving up into the Carolinas, the eastern seaboard. So a lot of people being affected by the system that spawned in the tropics, gosh, it seems like ages ago. But now, sure enough, it's leaving these shores and conditions here improving, Jen. Well, yeah, it's been since Halloween we've been tracking it, and it so took that loop-de-loop -loop here all around Florida, so pretty much everyone is feeling it in the state. Now with the latest headlines on Ada and what we know right now, unfortunately, the first death from Ada confirmed in the U.S. A man in the Bradenton, Florida area electrocuted by an appliance when he walked into standing floodwaters in his garage. Tampa International Airport plans to resume their flights at 9 o'clock this morning. HART, the public transportation provider for Tampa and Hillsborough County, plans to resume their service at noon. And the city of Sarasota tweets, all roads are open, but watch out for standing water. All right, so let me show you where everything is right now. We still have a few power outages out there, but the numbers have really calmed down. Um, where you see the, the white, that's where we have a less than 10,000 customers. So up around Jacksonville, that's new, but now Tampa and down to Fort, Fort Myers, there's still a couple of spots without power. The rainfall is moderate. No big heavy rain anywhere here across the zone from Lakeland up to Jacksonville, but we do have some moderate rain coming down, and the winds have been gusting up over about 25, close to 30 up into Jacksonville. Flooding is still possible. You notice where it is, though. It's right here on the eastern side. I mean, look, especially down here from, you know, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm, all the way down to Miami, where we've had a foot and a half of rainfall. Any more rain 
could exacerbate that and you know, they really couldn't handle a lot. But even you go up all the way north, this is where we've got the moisture plumes kind of setting up. The bulk of it offshore, that's the good news for now. The bulk of the moisture is offshore, but we do have this one band watching from Orlando, kind of arced around right towards Jacksonville, bringing you the steady rain this morning. We're going to time this out for you and take this out through the afternoon here in Jacks. We'll probably see that circulation come right overhead. The showers will be around through at least mid afternoon. And then after that, we have improving weather this evening. You might even think about, you know, sitting outside on your deck perhaps here because we will have some improved weather big time, both with the rainfall, but also the winds. Daytona Beach, Orlando, down towards Port Canaveral. We are going to have some gusty, breezy conditions right through at least the early afternoon time frame. And then winds will start to come down by the time we get into tonight. So you see three, four o'clock. We still have 15, 20, 25 mile per hour winds, but by this evening, those are all coming down. That's really the case all across the zone. I mean, even, you know, we saw the live shots in Tampa and in uh, clear water this morning with Reynolds and with Jim. And yes, we have some breezy conditions, but nowhere near the gusts that we had yesterday. Ada has just been a tropical storm that keeps on giving to South Florida. The system hammering Broward County with a foot and a half of rain earlier this week. And even so, another round of heavy downpours could still strike today. New this morning, some Fort Lauderdale residents are complaining the city just isn't doing enough to keep their homes dry. While people on Florida's west coast boarded up, homeowners on the other side of the state wanted to dry out. We had probably about six or eight inches of water fill up uh, the inside of the house. So, you know, at this point, we're just trying to see what we can save. The city of Fort Lauderdale deploying 30 pump trucks to flooded areas, <laughs> sucking up standing water and hauling it away. But people in the Melrose Park neighborhood blame the flood in part on inadequate storm infrastructure. They have not been maintaining the, the gullies, the drains. But we have a storm drain on this side and on this side, and both of them, as soon as the rain started, even Saturday night before the storm hit, that was already backing up. Fort Lauderdale's mayor says he'll add Melrose Park to a planned $200 million pump and drainage system improvement. Uh, people couldn't get to work, they couldn't get to the doctors, uh, damage to their property occurred. Even so, taxpayers are furious. We pay, we pay for storm water every month in our water bill. And this is what we get. This is outrageous. Improvements to Fort Lauderdale storm water system probably can't be completed until 2022. So neighborhoods like Melrose Park will remain a flood target in the short term. And this upcoming weekend, Steph, we've got the king tides. So even without any rain, yeah. we could see some flooding. Exactly. And South Florida has just been so soggy. We remain under a flood watch until 7 o'clock this evening. You see the clouds. It's getting a little bit better here. Miami actually two feet above average rainfall for the year for Lauderdale, nearly 29 inches above average. So there's really no more area for water to go. And we really are drying out, but we're going to see a few scattered showers. This is what we've seen over the past seven days. Remember, we've seen about, it was like 16 inches from Ada, because Ada's always been that Easter uh, east side loaded system. So as we widen out, you'll see that it's been wet anywhere from Fort Pierce, Stewart, West Palm, Delray, and from Palm Beach County down towards Homestead, we do have those flood watches along that I-95 corridor, A1A, and there are a few showers. So yes, it looks pretty in the tower cams we just showed you. By the way, it's hot in Florida this morning. I know you think, oh, is Florida supposed to be hot? Not supposed to be this hot and very humid too, but you'll get some of these passing showers and it won't take much to flood because everything is so saturated. As we go through the day, they will be scattered and then things will improve. So as we head into the evening and into tomorrow, getting much better for us here as everything kind of slides east. Now, the big question is, will we break this record from 1959? We're not that far off from it, all right? So we could, listen, with the pace that we're going and getting rain in Florida, we could break this. Are you a betting man or woman? Do you think we're going to break this bet here? We still have, you know, a month and a half to go or so. Here in Fort Lauderdale, we're number three. I don't know, this 102, that seems a little bit tough uh, to break here. And hopefully we do not get that wet. We haven't been that wet since 1947. Jen, all this moisture, though, streaming up the entire I-95 corridor. Yeah, and we really have some dangerous flood situations ongoing now in that area. So let's take you into that. This is new video just into the Weather Channel. Flooding in parts of North Carolina, road closures, water rescues being reported throughout the Rocky Mount area. 6.98 inches of rain has fallen at the Rocky Mount Wilson Airport. Five inches of the rain in just five hours. 
and those kind of rainfall rates is what leads exactly to situations like this roads closing the flooding. We have flash flood watches and flood watches that are posted all throughout this area. Pretty much the entire state of North Carolina, except for a little tiny sliver. And look at the rainfall here, especially you now the terrain plays a big role. The fact that we have the Appalachians and we've got the air that's coming in just like this here. You can see some of that those bands feeding up this way. Then at the upper levels, you got moisture coming in as well. So it's just leading to tremendous rainfall and big rainfall rates that's causing the flash flooding. We're seeing some of this track from Augusta, which by the way, they're now in a delay at the Masters all the way up through Charlotte and that stretch of rain. You can see how it's not progressing east. Hardly at all. It's moving slightly, slightly east, but not much. And so you're staying in this heavy rainfall. That's why you have the flash flood warning. Charlotte, Huntersville, Rock Hill. It's just not, not moving through. And you get these big rainfall rates for more than an hour or so. We have roads flooded across I-95 north and southbound near Little Rock Road. Cars in standing water. Fire rescue out in helping individuals get out of cars. That's in the Paul Creek area just to the northwest of Charlotte. Then we take you up to Hickory, where we've had a flash flood emergency this morning. Eight inches plus of rainfall. Here's I want to say somewhat of good news is that we um, are I think going to start to see this track farther east as we get in the next couple of hours. But in the short term, I mean, we're just still training. We're still getting in some of this you know, big rainfall rate type of uh, uh, air mass in place and that is going to lead to additional flooding and flash flooding and look at the past 24 hours. This is uh, this is underdone. Really, we've had you know, big rain last evening causing flooding on I 95 near Wilson. There's going to be more in that area today and big rain this morning all the way up from Lin Charlotte to Lynchburg and just to the south and east of Washington DC. All right, so this is where some of the biggest totals Jim are going to come out of actually now is up here in North Carolina, Virginia. I mean, you know, Jen, even a weakening tropical storm is still giving us massive headaches. Uh, it's, it's crazy, uh, but we know that. We know that. So, guys, you can see how high the debris got here. This is just off Bayshore Boulevard here. This is the first street. You can always, you know, look for the forensics, the evidence, how high it got. And in some cases, it got into the gentleman's garage uh, that you're seeing that wall there with. We will talk much more about Ada and the history of Tampa Bay Tropical Systems coming up. This record-breaking hurricane season isn't over. The threat from Ada is still complex and dangerous to the southeast. Big, big rainfall stretching from Miami all the way over to the west coast of Florida. No one can cover this historic hurricane season better than the Weather Channel. Get the information you need to stay safe all week long right here on the Weather Channel. And welcome back to continued coverage here on the Weather Channel. I'm meteorologist Reynolds Wolf, and let me tell you, it is a... Believe it or not, a quite a beautiful morning here at the beach, but what a rough night we certainly had. And I'll tell you, looks may be deceiving. Although things look pretty tranquil, hot sky above, the water is still a mess. And let me tell you, there's a community about 20 miles south from our location called Pass the Grill, where they've got reports of some flooding and quite a few homes. So you've got people that have got garages where they've stored a lot of their, their clothing, a lot of supplies, their water has come in, and it's going to be a big cleanup, no question about it, a big mess for a lot of folks that are going to be heading out and about. Where we happen to be, this location actually has a reputation for their white sand beaches and one of America's prettiest spots. And usually the water is just this beautiful turquoise blue, but that is not the situation today. Now, you may be feeling a bit of the blues if you have to go out and about and travel because there are roadways that may be impassable in some locations. We've had tree damage, perhaps some power outages. What's amazing, we mentioned this this morning, that in Pinellas County, zero happens to be the number in terms of the amount of outages here. However, when you go state wide, the number goes up around 15,000 or so, but hopefully those numbers will have more of a downward trend 
That'd be a positive thing as we go forward in time. Now, your travel out and about, those we mentioned, maybe hampered, especially the eastern side of the state. We had some showers there this morning, but it is going to be a state of improvement. Uh, Jen was talking about this earlier. Stephanie was too. And Jim and, and I have talked about this, how we have dry air that's now moving in. It feels a world different than it did earlier today. So that will certainly lift some spirits. The problem is, though, this thing is not bolted to the ground. Ada is still on the move. And to get Ada's ETA of what we can expect and how it's going to affect people up and down the eastern seaboard, we're talking millions of people. I've already dealt with rising water, some flooding in a lot of, a lot of other locations, not limited to just Florida. So as this high tails it a bit more to the north and northeast, it's bringing that tropical moisture. And with it, Stephanie, the trouble. And we're going to be talking about that right now. Yeah, we have a lot of big time problems here, especially in North Carolina. That deep moisture from Ada is combining with the front. And that front is squeezing the extra moisture out of the atmosphere. And that is bringing some very heavy downpours and flash flooding. Look at uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, seeing the rain. Columbia, South Carolina, Winston-Salem. There were portions of I-95 that were closed due to all the flooding that we saw here. And we want to show you where the worst of the weather is right now because there's a lot of moisture that's being pumped not only around this high pressure, but just the huge expanse of this tropical entity. It stretches, you know, hundreds of miles and then it runs into this, which is the super squeezer and it can really get all that moisture out of the atmosphere. So flooding is going to be an issue. Greenville, Raleigh, uh, Fayetteville, Florence over the past 24 hours. We've had two tongues of moisture and our front is continuing to move east and look, it's going to dump even more moisture over some of those same areas. So we're going to see more flash flood warnings that are going to be posted for us. We have three, five inches of rain here and there it is. I want to show you the live what's happening on our radar because we have huge problems here towards Hickory. We've had over eight inches of rain in 24 hours. This line's holding together. It is now raining out on Charlotte. It's moving pretty slowly. We have flash flood warnings there. Flash flood warning means it's imminent or it's occurring two inches of rain already that visibility 242 now and that number is going to go up very quickly because our rainfall rates are at least an inch an hour. We've been seeing that here and look how it's not even through the city yet. So we are going to see tremendous rain totals. Again, this has put out eight inches in the last 24 hours. There's already been some rescues going on here. Paw Creek, a flooded road across I-85 north and southbound lanes near Little Rock Road, several cars in standing water, fire rescues, uh, assisting individuals. So if you live in and around Charlotte, stay home. If you live east of Charlotte, stay home. Look at Harrisburg just getting into it because we know that this line is holding together and we know the history of it. So we have an idea of what to expect. Flash flooding. And that's why if you don't have to leave the house, do not do it. Flash flood emergency. So flash flood watch means conditions are favorable. Flash flood warning means it's imminent or it's occurring. And then flash flood emergency means that you probably have rescues that are ongoing. So flash flood emergency is the worst that it gets. Look at this. We have uh, two to three feet over the banks there um, is my guess there. Uh, water coming up out of manhole covers in Marion. Multiple water rescues as well in Hidden Night. A lot going on. Evergreen, you also seeing over eight inches of rain. There's your flash flood warning and more rain to come. So this is a very serious situation and it's going to take all day to get this rain out of here. And so I expect to see uh, more rescues ongoing here, Jim, but hopefully people will stay home so we don't have to end yeah. up in that predicament. Yeah, horrible situation, Steph. I'm, I'm not surprised at the kind of rainfall because it is so humid out here. This is yeah. just amazing to me, especially for mid-November. All right, uh, well, you know what else is amazing is look at this. You can follow the debris line on this street that we've come off of Bayshore here. And I just want to show you how it kind of wraps around and makes its way all the way up the street to where the intersection to another street is and then goes in front of those yards. So you can really see it. Stick around, guys, because coming up shortly, I'm going to take you uh, into last night, about midnight, okay? The woman who doesn't want to be on camera and I totally respect that uh, shared with her the video as the storm surge was coming up to her front door. You're going to see that and what it looks like now coming up in just a moment. Stick around. Breaking right now at his 28 past the hour. Here's a live look at Raleigh, North Carolina and Charlotte, North Carolina. We do have flash flood warnings for both Raleigh and Charlotte right now. So a flash flood warning means that flash flooding is imminent or it's occurring. We've already heard of rescues. The line of rain that is causing the weather you're seeing right now has already dropped 
over eight inches of rain in a 24 hour period to the west in places like Hickory, North Carolina, where they're seeing huge issues with the flooding and this is slow to move in Charlotte. We average 3.14 inches of rain for the entire month of November. And we've already seen over two inches of rain and look how much more is to come. It is just getting into the heart of Charlotte. If you live east on the east side of Charlotte, you need to stay home. Everyone needs to stay home because there's a very serious situation going on with the rainfall that's coming down and accumulating and the fact that it's coming down so quickly. This is, could be a, a deadly situation if you try to drive through any of these flooded waters. Raleigh also in a flash flood warning. Again, flash flooding is imminent or it's occurring. And a lot of these places are seeing rainfall rates of an inch, an hour or more. And remember, these areas get three inches for the entire month. You're going to get basically a month's worth of rainfall in a very short period of time. And that means that the ground cannot keep up, up with it and you're going to see some problems. So Charlotte, uh, I know that this number is over two inches now. We're probably close to about two and a half inches. You also have gusty winds here at 20 miles an hour. Um, you know, rain from the north side to the south side. Now, all of, whenever you see these, that means that there's some sort of water rescue or road that is blocked by water. Emergency vehicles, uh, emergency management reports three vehicles in flood waters. This is why we want everyone to stay home. If you do see any flooding, do not drive through it. So many people die because they try to drive through flood waters. So here's our line of flash flood warnings, and this is slow moving. So that's one of the other problems. This line of storms is going to take a bit to get through Charlotte. And this is blinding rain, the kind that your windshield wipers will not keep up with. So you also don't know if roads get washed out or if you can't see what's happening underneath the water, you could run into trouble. So again, we do have flash flood warnings for us down to Rock Hill. As we take you through the morning, watch how long it takes to get through. 10 o'clock, it's still coming down. And it's going to make its way out as we head into the early afternoon hours. But I think that there is going to be tremendous damage done with all the heavy rain that is going to be falling here. This is just one of our models. We could see, in, you know, three to five inches additional rain uh, coming out of this. And it's not just a Charlotte area, but up towards Greensboro. And then everything is moving east ahead of it. So we do have a lot of showers and thunderstorms along the I-95 corridor. This is holding together well. By the way, Augusta is being affected by this line of storms, too. There's very heavy rain and there's lightning, so they've stopped play. They actually, I think they teed off and then they stopped play almost immediately with the storms coming through. Now, here's the thing with Augusta. We still have a while to get through this rain, so it's going to be a minute. So hang with us here on the Weather Channel, and then perhaps later this afternoon, they're going to be able to play. Now, the greens will be slow because there'll be so much rain on them and so wet, but I still, still think we're going to probably be able to get um, some play in as we head into the afternoon hours. But this is from a front. And then some of that moisture from Ada that's coming up from Florida. Remember, it's a big system, and so it's delivering extra moisture into our front. The front can wring out more moisture from the atmosphere, just like your hand squeezing a sponge. That's exactly what this front is doing. So that's why it's double trouble, and it really takes until we get into the overnight hours to get off the coast here of the Outer Banks. But, Jen, you know, Ada causing flooding not only here into the Carolinas, but, of course, in Florida as well. Yeah, and now the heaviest of rain is up there into the Carolinas in Virginia, but we see that moisture extending back all the way down through Florida. It's actually the eastern side of Florida. I think that if anyone gets into heavy rain today, it's going to be us down here in Miami. Look how we're now starting to see these plumes set up. We'll see if they expand a bit more. But right now, the biggest amount of moisture is right here off the coast. That moisture plume extends up into North Carolina. Steph was just talking about the heavy rain right there. We still have inland tropical storm warnings. Gainesville, Jacksonville, the circulation is crossing right over that area. Here you go. You can see it right here. The rainfall is not really that heavy with the circulation. The winds aren't that strong anymore. That it is weakening now that it's over land and losing its energy source. Winds uh, with the system 45 miles per hour. We're going to see, I think, winds less than that, though, in most spots. Orlando gusting to 25. Just saw a picture of a rainbow at the airport, actually. So you get a little rain this morning. You're getting a rainbow um, as you take off from Orlando International. And as far as I can tell, flights are still coming and going there. Now, we're going to be watching for these still these banding features today. So in Naples, we're still not done with showers. West Palm, we're still not done with showers. You can see that set up today. Luckily, in the modeling, there's nothing that just sits and dumps rain like we have seen every single day this week pretty much here over the Florida Peninsula. That said, you know, even an inch or two of rain at this point can cause additional issues for especially from Vero Beach southward to Miami, and we do have possible flash flooding for today. Finally, by tonight, we will see you get the all clear.
Some new video of Tropical Storm Ada to show you the scene just last hour in Claremont, Florida, as a band of heavy downpours rolled through. This is in the Orlando area. Now, unlike South Florida, the Orlando metro is fairly close to average for its yearly rainfall total. So a little better equipped to handle these uh, cloud bursts, if you will. We could take a little rain here. Now, it's also not going to be nonstop like it has in other spots and like it is this morning. You're up to the Mid-Atlantic. Heavy downpours fueled in part by Ada flooding roads around the Washington, D.C. metro this morning. A daily record 2.02 inches fell at Reagan National yesterday and then three quarters of an inch of rain since midnight. Flood warnings in place for the district and a half dozen metro counties in Virginia. Stafford County Public Schools will hold all classes virtually due to flooded roads. And in fact, some of that is coming in for other schools too, around uh, you know, from Virginia down to North Carolina, like in uh, places like Charlotte, of course, with the flooding rain that we're having this morning. Schools are starting to adjust, either going late, doing virtual. Um, check with your school. We've got 95, we've got 85, we've got 40, we've got 81. We've got a lot of big roads impacted by this flooding. And the, the flooding has been so much, going back to yesterday, that even I-95 in spots around Wilson, North Carolina, had to be closed because of the heavy rain. So we're going to watch all of this. There's a lot of smaller roads that are closed, especially watching up here across the western Appalachians where we do, or across western North Carolina, in the Appalachians where we do have a flood watch, where we have flood warnings lined up along this entire stretch. And pretty much from here in South Carolina up to North Carolina and Virginia, we've got a widespread seven or eight inches of rain in so many locations. Augusta in a weather delay right there at the Masters. Charlotte, we're getting inundated with big rainfall rates, more than an inch per hour. And it's just pretty much sitting right over top of the city. So this is a spot you want to avoid travel. Hickory, Newton, St. Stephen's also want to avoid travel. We've had the heavy rain, the flash flooding, streams coming out of their banks, and also that we've had landslides. I saw one report up in Burke County, a landslide that 30 feet across, two feet deep. And that, of course, moving of roadways is causing travel hazards there. Charlotte down to Rock Hill. We've got the flash flood warning for you. This goes until 11 a.m. And look how these echoes are just lined up right into the Charlotte area, not really moving, training and moving right over the same spot if it's moving at all. And that is going to continue to cause tremendous rain for you. The Raleigh area now under a flash flood warning. We've got about 2 million people under this. Look at this rain coming on in. Same thing as in Charlotte. When you see these bright colors, the reds, the oranges, on the radar. That's some big rainfall rates and that's in, you know, usually the type of rain that's hard for storm drains to keep up with. So you'll watch for urban flooding there. We're going to watch up just to the north of there as well. Now Henderson and Rocky Mount, you just went under a flash flood warning as well. This goes until 2:30 this afternoon. Steph. 1.12 inches now, uh, Jen, in Charlotte. And let's go to where Ada made landfall. That's Florida. Swamping Tampa over the past 24 hours, a water rise of 3.8 feet at Old Port in Tampa, the highest level of surge since 1991. Roads near the Courtney Campbell Causeway overrun by water this morning. The airport getting four inches of rain in the past 24 hours. So let's go back out to Jim Cantori and talk more about the surge in Tampa because, Jim, a lot of people are saying, well, this is the worst, you know, I've ever seen it. And I've lived here a while. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that the West Coast doesn't see a lot of storms like this, A, and B, the exact placement of the storm. Yeah, and also, you know, if you think about it, uh, high tide was last night, too. So we kind of got a little help from the tide, if you will, uh, when the maximum storage surge came in. But, Steph, uh, one thing about the airport before I go on here, I did want to say that they hope to be fully operational. They're speeding up operations at Tampa International uh, by 9 o'clock this morning. So that's uh, very, very shortly uh, in that area. But let's talk about the storm surge because this is incredible. And I think even for residents here, whether you just moved here or you've lived here, to see almost four feet of storm surge from a tropical storm, storm that came in about 130 miles to our north, that's a pretty big deal. So behind me here, Tampa Bay, water, it's basically oriented from southwest uh, to northeast, if you will, in the upper part of the bay. So with a southwest wind, all that can do is push the water up, all right? It can push the water up. And one thing I just noticed about the seawall here, uh, and, and Steph and, and Jen, if you're watching this too, you, you'll see familiarities with the Galveston seawall. So to curve it like that, takes the energy out of the wave, all right? But when water rises, it rises above all that, right? So there you see the surges. Uh, a lot of people remember Josephine in 96, Debbie, Hermine, and these were not big storms, but they had big surge in either Clearwater Beach, Stephanie, or also, um, uh, also up here in Tampa Bay. All right, so the other thing too, if you look at the 12 landfalls we've had, think about how many of them developed right before landfall. Right. At least with Ada, Steph, it did not. No, it was weakening, but Jim, 
you still don't even need you know that strong of winds obviously to cause significant no. surge. So this was yes right. weakening as it was coming ashore, but we had wind gusts up to 66 miles an hour in Beverly Hills. That's the highest I've seen. That's north of Tampa. But look at all the 30, 40, 50 mile an hour gusts that we had. And again, it's about that wind direction as Jim was mentioning. So if you just get that wind direction, you actually don't need that strong amount of winds. There it is for you uh, to push the water up. And again, it's Florida. It's low lying, so that plays a role. And the other thing that plays a role, Jim, is how the slope is coming off the coast of Florida. Right. It, all it does is allow the water to pile up, so they're very susceptible to storm surge on the west coast. And you can kind of see that here as you kind of gradually slope out. If you remember back when we had Irma, okay, a few years ago, how the offshore winds were actually blowing yeah, the water yeah. out. Yeah. And people were out walking around, yes. uh, you know, in, the, in some of these bays because it's so shallow. Unfortunately, Steph, on the other hand, it plays a big role in getting the water up, too, yeah. and get it up high and keep it up. Guys, more on Ada and the Charlotte flood in just a moment. And earlier this morning, if you were joining us on AMHQ, we were talking to David and Joyce, the homeowners here to the house on the left, and they were basically cleaning up their yard, one that they just moved into Monday, by the way, uh, this home. Uh, and they were hoping, uh, obviously, that Public Works would get out here and clean it up. Look at this. All right, they're out here uh, getting getting a lot of the debris out of the roads and whatnot because this is essentially what happens with almost four foot of storm surge. You get the water to rise over uh, Bayshore Boulevard, and it comes up some of these low streets here uh, in this corner. This is a, one of the lower points, if you will, on Bayshore. But, you know, if you get up ready for them, obviously, in the yard, they'll get out here and obviously uh, clean this up. So they're right on it here, Public Works in Tampa, and making uh, make an ADA just a memory. Unfortunately, Stephanie, that's not necessarily the case in other areas uh, of the country. Really, really taking it hard right now uh, in, in the Charlotte metro area. That they are. And we're going to show you what's happening with Ada right now because this is uh, the time when we usually do the tropical update. So we want to rip through that real quick so we can get back to what's happening in Charlotte. But we want you to get the information that you've tuned in for. So here's a look 45 mile per hour winds. To be a tropical storm, it has to be 39 mile per hour winds. And I'm going to go through this fairly quickly so we can get back to that developing situation into the Carolinas. There's your dry air coming in. And that is uh, what's really eating this system apart as we take you down closer into the Tampa Bay area. We have seen significant rain over the past 36 hours. This is radar estimated, so do keep that in mind. And a few stray showers coming in. There's your wind. It's really died down for us here. It's going to be up closer. Gainesville, Jacksonville, uh, taking that route, you are going to see some of those stronger winds. But it goes through so fast because our system has been moving so quickly. I know I'm moving quickly, but again, we have a very serious situation going on in the Carolinas. Florida, a few more passing showers today. And then for our Friday, much improved for us here many of us will see that sunshine. Unfortunately, we need to take you to an area that is going to get hit yet again. Swaths of Honduras hit hard. Look at this bus underwater. Neighborhoods semi submerge up to roofs in some spots. Locals cut off by the feet of rain. They're using boats to actually bring supplies to people that are trapped. Unfortunately, at least 120 dead in Central America and in Mexico. And here's our totals from Ada. And it brought tremendous flooding. It's just been heartbreaking. Belize, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Honduras, all of us here seeing awful rain. And look what's about to happen again. This is a forecast for our next system. Literally over the same areas, the Euro and the GFS both have heavy rain. So essentially, we know we're going to get heavy rain. Where is it right now? Well, this is our system, 90% chance of developing over the next five days as it moves west. 
And so regardless if it gets to name Iota or not, Jen, we are going to see just another heartbreaking situation, unfortunately, uh, developing here. And a scary one developing not only in Central America in the coming days, but right now here in the U.S. Right, and we're dealing with flooding rainfall in western North Carolina and Virginia. Uh, right now, the Gusta area, we've got a delay at the Masters because of these thunderstorms moving on through. But by far, some of the biggest impact weather is happening right here um, up through Charlotte where flooding rain is ongoing right now. Heavy rain continuing to fall and really not moving out. If you notice that training effect of how that radar was moving along, echoes moving in the same spots here. And it's big rain too. Where you see the yellows and the oranges and the reds, those are the heavy rainfall rates. We're still dealing with rain around Hickory. Look how the yellows are now starting to shift just to the east of town. Phew. All right, so finally we're getting a move on, but we're still in it. Not to say it's over yet, but at least we're going to, I think, see a little progress in the next couple of hours. This is where there have been water rescues. Hickory, uh, we've seen more than eight inches of rain, and that was an hour ago. So it's, I'm sure it's added up much more than that. Maybe we're even close to nine in a few local areas now. I mean, these are the rainfall estimates, three to five, underdone, because we have had reports of eight inches from spotters up in that area. Then we go down to Charlotte, where we have officially had 3.22 inches of rain. Look at the these big red and uh, orange blobs coming in. This is incredibly heavy rainfall rates, the kind of rain that the visibility is down almost near zero when you're driving in it. And speaking of driving, I just shared a picture on Twitter of, you know, someone driving where the road pretty much looked like a lake and you couldn't even see the road surface beneath it. So there's a lot of dangerous situations out there when it comes to driving, when it comes to flooding and there were some water rescues around Paul City um, just about an hour ago. More again, 3.22 is where we are now. It is our second wettest November day on record in Charlotte. It's just adding up so quick uh, you can't even keep the graphics updated. Now we look at the radar estimated rainfall. Again, this is overdone. Widespread, you've had at least an inch or two, but obviously in Charlotte, we've had over three inches of rain already. And big rain coming in around the Raleigh area. Saw some of the, the creeks. I think it was the Crabtree Creek I saw here that just started uh, coming up and you can really see, you know, the elevated levels of it. You'll have to watch for flooding around that today. We've already had more than an inch of rainfall and we are in a similar situation like Charlotte where we've got rain that's going to be training and setting up in this area where we don't really get much of a break. In fact, there's even more rain to come in Raleigh because you see where we are and then you see what's still to come. This still has to all get through the area. Flash flood warning here until 2.30 for Goldsboro, Rocky Mount, and Wilson. And so this whole zone it had heavy rain last night. We're in the track of more heavy rainfall and very likely that we will see flash flooding across this area. Let me time it out for you as we see the Charlotte area by this afternoon. We'll be drying out. We get to Raleigh. We'll start drying out by about the dinner hour. But look at it, Cape Hatteras and the Outer Banks and Wilmington and Myrtle Beach. We are stuck in this rain all day and flash flooding is going to be a real concern as we get into the evening. It's really not until you go to bed tonight. Then finally we get the bulk of the moisture off the coast. Not to say you're completely drying out, but let's just get this heavy rain out of the way, right? It's going to take a while for now. Be safe out there. We are watching for some heavy rain all the way up into parts of Virginia as well. All right, let's take you out on Augusta National Weather in a weather delay. You can... And a dangerous situation ongoing in Charlotte this morning. We have a flash flood warning in effect until 11 a.m. Uh, Huntersville, you're also included in that. We've seen several inches of rain already. We're already starting to have reports of water over the roads, some water rescues ongoing this morning already as well. You can see there in Paul Creek, the road is flooded across I-85 North. So we have a major highway that's dealing with flooding right now. That's southbound near Little Rock Road. So we've got cars stuck in standing water. At this point, of course, uh, as we head through the morning and the rain is not stopping. Look at that. The rain just continues to feed across the Piedmont up through uh, Virginia as well. Uh, let's take a look at this report. Huntersville emergency management reporting three ve vehicles in flooded waters. Guys, that's why we say uh, turn around because you don't know how deep that uh, water could be and you don't want to end up stuck. So dangerous situation ongoing this morning. 
Welcome into the show. I'm meteorologist Felicia Combs alongside hurricane expert Dr. Greg Postel. Ada has made its fourth landfall, its second landfall in Florida. Ada whipped up southwest Florida with heavy rain and storm surge under the cover of darkness. It triggered gusty winds up to 50 miles per hour across the Tampa Bay area. Ada has also brought the fourth highest water level at the St. Petersburg gauge with nearly three and a half feet. Well, that rain is now moving across central Florida and into the eastern part of the state. Here's a live look at Orlando, Gainesville, and Jacksonville. Not looking much like the sunshine state right now. Expect rain through the day and wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour. Now, Dr. Postel, you're going to take a closer look at where Ada is now and how strong those winds are. Yeah, it's uh, just a little bit northwest of Gainesville, Florida. I believe that's where the center of circulation is now inland. It made landfall again in Florida uh, there early this morning about, uh, let's see, 4.20 a.m. Eastern time. Here's the recap on when Ada, excuse me, yeah, Ada made second landfall. I'm confusing all my Greek letters now. We're so far into them. Uh, tropical storm, it came in with 50 mile per hour winds, uh, very near Cedar Key, so somewhere around there, just to the north, northeast of Cedar Key with a pressure around 996. So that's the summary of the landfall. But again, now Ada is well inland and still bringing some heavy rain along the way. But overall, this is a, a much weaker system than even we were dealing with yesterday. And here's just the recap from late last night. There you can see it moving north uh, eastward across parts of North Florida, now getting closer and closer to Jacksonville in areas uh, along the northeast coast. Right now, the winds are, you know, gusty here and there, but overall fairly manageable. Again, the center of circulation there, not far from Lake City, just to the north uh, west of Gainesville, Florida. Some rain bands are moving through, but none of them are particularly heavy. So this is good news. We're not likely to see uh, really any flooding concerns across parts of North Florida. Again, the breezes, we're talking maybe uh, Craig Municipal Airport around Jacksonville reporting a wind gust of 30, but uh, Jacksonville International, uh, 14 mile per hour sustained wind. Fernandina Beach, this is the windiest part on the map on Amelia Island right now. Uh, this is a south wind gusting to 40 miles per hour. So it's getting gusty out there. And that's about as I think most uh, the much, as much wind we'll see uh, with this system as it moves across the region. The next thing we have to concern ourselves is with the rain because the rain will feed in off the Atlantic in areas in Georgia and especially South Carolina later on this afternoon. You can see how this model sort of pushes Ada out. It's say later on this afternoon. It's right out here. It's going this way. But the problem is it's being sort of caught up by a front and that front will enhance some of the rain on its edges, which will still be a problem, I think, for parts of the eastern and north and south Carolina throughout the evening hours. Felicia. Thanks, Dr. Postel. Yeah, Ada, just not stopping. So let's talk more about that. Ada's surge in coastal impacts on Florida's west coast. Our meteorologist Reynolds Wolf joins us live in Clearwater Beach for a closer look at what the storm did there. Reynolds, you know, people say, oh, a tropical storm. It's amazing that it can do this, but it just goes to show you uh, every storm is different. Oh, they're all different. Absolutely. There's some similarities, but yeah, no two are exactly the same, which is one of the things that makes meteorology so fascinating. It has been a fascinating transformation that we've seen here last night. I'd say between hours of, say, 9 o'clock and maybe 1 o'clock this morning, we had the run of the wind and the rain, and it was certainly quite rough. We did have power outages. If you want a silver line to what's happened, at one point we had power outages in excess of 20,000. Right now, the number has dropped below 10,000 and improving. Another neat factor is that in Pinellas County, that number is zero outages reported. So that's some good news. We're going to do this game very quickly called Does It Verify? Does an image verify to the radar? Let me show you something. We make our way up the coast and go to the north and you'll notice we've got some dark skies here and it would appear that rain might be falling. Now as we check out radar, voila, you can see that yes, we do have some scattered showers that are coming through. This is the tail end. Think of this being the exhaust fumes of this tropical system known as Ada. And we had rough times we mentioned last night, but this is the telltale of what we've been dealing with. Now, let's give you a bit of good news. Uh, the airport has opened up. It opened up around 9 o'clock. We've got flights that are going to resume. That's certainly some good news. Uh, however, we have some good news also, not just in the skies, but also in the ground. The main causeway that goes back towards Tampa, uh, it was blocked for a while. The eastbound lanes due to water and debris, that has now improved. That's good news. It's open. But still, there are reports farther to the south of where we happen to be of communities that dealt with the surge, the flooding, a lot of issues. Now the cleanup really gets underway. The weather's going to cooperate, though. We've seen the worst of it here. And if you look ahead over the next several hours, 
temperatures really pretty much staying in the same neighborhood of those mid to upper 70s. But uh, I'll tell you, long term, things will get better in terms of sky conditions, partly cloudy, and that's certainly some good news. They could use a break here in the state of Florida. What a year it's been for not only us, but for really everyone. But but sure enough, uh, conditions are going to be really the, the big cleanup. Uh, a lot of roads dealt with some issues. You get this, uh, Felicia, last night at one point in Pinellas County, we had some flooding in a mobile home park where water was up to waist deep. There were swift water evacuations. Um, Great work by the men and women of the of the first responders to rescue those people. But now the water is descended and now the cleanup gets underway. That's the story here in Pinellas County, more namely Clearwater Beach, where the skies are anything but for the time being. Felicia. Yeah, Reynolds, it's been a rough go of it. That water comes up very quickly. Thanks so much. We'll check back in with you a little later. Well, let's take a look at new video into the Weather Channel from the Queen City. Uh, that rain just keeps falling. We've had water rescues already this morning. A, a really dangerous situation taking place, especially in some of those low-lying, flood-prone places. Well, thanks to some tropical moisture and a front, rain is soaking the southeast and the mid-Atlantic. That uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, you guys are getting in on this. D.C., you take a live look here and you can see the drops on the cameras. It is definitely a soggy morning after a couple pretty nice days. Now, flash flooding is going to be a big concern as we head throughout the rest of the Day, that is for sure. So let's talk a little bit more about it as we just have this tropical feed of moisture ongoing and those numbers are really beginning to add up. You can see here in the past 12 hours, uh, Winston Salem, we've got that adding up to several inches back around Hickory as well. Several reports of uh, flooding ongoing currently here in Paul Creek. Uh, here is part of the problem water water flooding across I 85 North. So we have several major highways that are feeling the impacts of this water rise and that could get dangerous very quickly, especially for people people uh, commuting on those roads that might not know the area so well. This is what we're looking at over the past 48 hours. You can see here along that I-40 corridor, we've seen three to five inches in some places. Those orange speckles that you're seeing there, that's five to eight inches, locally higher amount certainly in some places. So this flood watch ongoing uh, across portions of the Piedmont. And then as we look out toward the coastal plain, Wilmington, Norfolk, you guys are under a flash flood watch because we don't expect this rain to end anytime soon. Now, the bad news, we're still stuck in this tropical moisture. The good news is once we get this front to clear out, we're going to have some drier air building in, but we've got to get through all the rain that we're dealing with this morning first, and there is an abundance of it. Look at all of this green, all of that flood alerts, and then look what's happening. We have this rain kind of riding up the same areas over and over again. It is soaked on the Piedmont this morning and soaked around the Charlotte area. Uh, you can see some of that heavy rain still falling where you see the yellows and the oranges. Um, that is where we have heavy rain still falling. So we've got this flash flood warning in effect for the Charlotte area until 11 a.m. So we've got about two hours left on that. You guys have a little while, uh, a little way to go. And then up to Winston-Salem and Greensboro, you guys also under that flash flood warning. So we really are seeing um, high, high population areas being impacted by this flooding. So take it easy out there. And of course, it doesn't take long for that flooding to turn dangerous. Our Chris Warren breaks down the factors that make this a reality. Every thunderstorm begins with a single raindrop, but trillions can follow and all that water rushes downhill. The early makings of a disaster. And it doesn't need to be raining where you are. A street like this in a valley can funnel the water, creating a dangerous setup for a flash flood. Heavy rainfall is the main ingredient in flash flooding. Other factors include building in a flood zone, improper drainage, and ground that's just too wet and can't absorb any more water. And this happens fast. Now look at the street. The water is business to business here, wall to wall. Whoa, what's this guy doing? And this water is about six inches now, and it's enough to stall vehicles and even float vehicles in some cases. You're going to lose control, and you don't want to be this guy. So if you come to a street that's flooded, turn around, don't drown. More than half of the deaths from flooding each year occur in vehicle. And the water's still rising here. In fact, it's enough to flow pretty much anything away that's not bolted down at two feet. It's going to carry you away uh, even cars like this. Oh my gosh, look at this. This is an SUV, and the water is high enough now to carry SUVs and pickup trucks. And this water is well inside these businesses, and this is scary. This is bad. That's not good to see something like that. We're talking some immense destruction with the force of this water. It can carry debris for miles, entire trees. In fact, water flowing at just 10 miles an hour can produce the same force as winds blowing at 300 miles an hour. Look at this. This is a huge log coming down the road, and so scary. You never know it's even in the water, but you can see some of the larger objects, including a truck right here, 
absolutely life-threatening situations that come with flash flooding. And unfortunately, more heavy rain events are occurring due to our warming climate. So you are more likely to be caught in this situation. If you ever do get stuck in a flash flood, try to stay calm. Get as high as possible and make yourself visible while you wait for first responders. Heavy rain events are predicted to be 40% more common for parts of the country within this century. Just as quickly as the water came up, it goes down, leaving behind a muddy mess of debris and dangers like sharp objects, hazardous waste, also a big concern, and down power lines. So follow the forecast and remember, when a road is flooded, Always, always turn around, don't drown. And there's a severe area we're closely watching today as those tropical downpours push across the southeast and the mid-Atlantic. Dr. Postel, you've got a closer look at that. And, of course, it's impacting lots of things. One of those things this morning, the Masters. Yeah, we're hearing that there is at least some delay in the start of the tournament today, uh, being the first day of it. And so we'll keep you posted on the forecast in and around the Augusta, Georgia area. But it does look like there's good news here that the greatest chance for severe weather is farther to the east uh, than there, fortunately for Augusta, but not so much for areas in North and South Carolina, where we do have some chance of severe weather today. Now, I don't think it's going to be a widespread outbreak by any means, but some thunderstorms that we see today could reach severe limits, with gusty winds, of course, being the primary threat, not so much hail, maybe a slight chance of a brief spin-up of a tornado. We'll be watching that very carefully. But the good news is, is right now on the radar, in that very area that's outlined by the Storm Prediction Center, there is no severe thunderstorm or tornado warnings in effect as we speak. But if they pop up, we will let you know as soon as possible. The reason why we've got that threat basically is because we've got a lot of moisture surging into the region that is feeding some thunderstorm activity. Now, that thunderstorm activity is being triggered by that front that's moving in. So with the front coming this way and the circulation around Ada is bringing the moisture that way, well, those thunderstorms will have that moisture to work with, and that is associated with a lot of instability. So east of that front in the air mass that's still relatively warm and humid, there is enough instability to support severe weather. So sort of you go down the list of ingredients, that's the primary one that says, aha, I think we can get severe weather because of the buoyancy available. Right now, as I said, no severe weather in progress, but in the next couple of hours, even in the afternoon, we do have Torcons of two out there. On a scale of zero to 10, it's not on the high end of the scale, but it doesn't mean you can dismiss the possibility of a couple of tornadoes with some of the strongest storms. I would say, especially in the eastern part, of South Carolina and even in southeastern North Carolina. Now, there's going to be a lot of rain and there's going to be a lot of factors that kind of work against organized severe weather, Felicia. But in isolated spots, you cannot rule it out. Back to you. And that flooding itself dangerous enough. Well, right now, people in Fort Lauderdale are doing their best to dry out from Ada's flooding. The storm has added to the area's total rainfall amount for November so far, which is nearly nine inches. A flood watch remains in effect here through tonight. So let's take a live look at conditions now in Lauderdale by the sea. Doesn't look terrible, but certainly can tell it's still very breezy. The uh, waters are churned up there. We've got some cloud cover around. Looks a little bit drier than it has been, though. And I, I think at this point, we'll take any of that dryness that we can get because it has just been so soggy across Florida. A quick look at where we're seeing some of those higher totals. Uh, this magenta that you're seeing there, Hard Rock Stadium, seeing a ton of rain. That is a foot to a foot and a half of rain. Broward County just absolutely getting swamped. That's uh, not to say that down through Miami-Dade, Southern Palm Beach County, not also included in that swamping because you guys are. Hence, this flood watch that we have ongoing from Palm Beach County south into Miami-Dade. That is lasting through this evening. We're going to eventually start to see this rain uh, tapering off as we head into this evening, but uh, a little bit of a break right now, but we have a whole other line of rain that's going to be filling in as we head through the afternoon. Immokalee, you'll start out as we head into about lunch hour, and then we start to see those showers once again picking up this afternoon across Palm Beach County, across Broward and Miami-Dade. We're going to talk more about this and the flooding emergency going on in Charlotte. That's coming up after the break. at the Home Depot.
This record-breaking hurricane season isn't over. The threat from Ada is still complex and dangerous to the southeast. Big, big rainfall stretching from Miami all the way over to the west coast of Florida. No one can cover this historic hurricane season better than the Weather Channel. Get the information you need to stay safe all week long right here on the Weather Channel. All right, let's get you back to that breaking situation in the Charlotte area. We've got a flash flood warning ongoing, and guys, this is quickly becoming a dangerous situation as we've seen three to four inches of rain falling uh, around this area already, and that runoff, especially into those low-lying places, is making for an even more dangerous situation. Paul Creek here, the road flooded across I-85 North, so we're getting major interstates in on this flooding with the water crossing the road. I can't tell you how easily it's going to be to hydroplane with this type of rain coming down and the type of rain we've already seen in Huntersville. We've got uh, reports of vehicles in floodwaters, three vehicles there from emergency management. So uh, definitely want to give yourself some extra time and use caution if you're headed out there in the Piedmont this morning. Well, Ada making landfall earlier this morning, striking the west coast of Florida, bringing heavy rain, wind and storm surge to the Tampa area. Boats bashing ashore, waves spilling over railings, streets submerged, stop signs blowing back and forth and emergency vehicle vehicles out performing water rescues. Now, the old port Tampa gauge tipping at its all time high of 3.87 feet. So of course, uh, with Ada, we say this all the time, every storm is different and you get the exact right setup as we had with Ada and storm surge becomes a problem because surge is created by that wind up against the shore and that push of water. And that is what we certainly saw in some places. And then with some uh, rainfall as well, adding to it, look at some of these accumulations, more than a half foot here between uh, Clearwater and St. Petersburg, everywhere you're seeing those orange Oranges, that's five to eight inches or more. So we really saw quite a bit of rain around the Bay Area. And then we added on to that with the storm surge. You can see some of the reports here. We talked about Old Port Tampa, nearly four in, or four feet of storm surge, uh, more than three feet there in Port Manatee. So uh, we did see some pretty impressive storm surge totals. We've seen some uh, debris issues with this so far this morning. Now in St. Petersburg so far with Ada, this is the fourth highest that we have from that storm surge. That's the water above normally dry ground. You can see uh, back in 1985 still holds a record with Alina. However, though, in old Port Tampa, we now have that number one record from Ada, as mentioned, nearly four feet of storm surge surge there, which has certainly caused some problems across the Tampa Bay, the Santa St. Petersburg area as well. We're still not quite done as we have that onshore flow. One to three feet of storm surge still possible. Now joining us live from Clearwater Beach to talk about the impacts of Ada on the west coast of Florida. We've got meteorologist Reynolds Wolf. So Reynolds, talk to us a little bit about what's going on right now. Well, Felicia, I got to tell you the, the situation we have now is very different from what we had during the overnight hours. I would say that there was a window of say from nine o'clock at night till around one o'clock in the morning with the rain was coming in really in sheets. We had wind that was much stronger and with it, we did have some tree damage and farther to our south, about 20 miles or so, there were some reports of some flooding, but also there was flooding in this area too in Pinellas County. Actually around 1206 in the morning, there was some water, high water rescues at a trailer park in Pinellas County and first responders came to the rescue and uh, took some people to safety. But uh, sure enough, the water's begun to recede. You've got partly cloudy skies the time being and actually some families off in the distance that are returning to the beach. This two and a half mile stretch of beach is supposedly one of America's prettiest and it is gorgeous. But if you look at that water, I got to tell you, it is not the sapphire blue that we see from time to time. It is quite tumultuous for the time being and quite a bit of I'll see uh, you got some grasses. You've got some debris that is piled up and you've got really the beginning of a much better day. But it's hard to believe when you think about Ada and this story of the system where it was in the Caribbean, the damage it did to places like Honduras and now still affecting millions of people in some places, the form of flooding in spots like Charlotte. Felicia, let's send it back to you. Thanks so much, Reynolds. And, you know, it just seems like we've been talking about this storm for so long at this point. But the problem is hurricane season, Dr. Postel, still not over. It just keeps going. Yeah, we're not done yet. Um, and it's actually been kind of the thinking around here that we wouldn't be done even in mid-November. we got a ways to go yet. We have another invest out there, an area to watch, which is in the Caribbean right here. It's a collection of thunderstorms that's actually got a bunch of stuff going for it. In other words, I think there's a pretty good chance that this becomes our next name storm. And uh, it's got a lot of spin, and that's what I contoured here in this shades of green 
in blue. That's kind of a measure of how the atmosphere is circulating around. And the more it does that, the more likely it is to turn into something. And, and we've got that. And I put the winds on here at, uh, say, about 10,000 feet to show you that they may not be closed all around in a circle, but there's certainly enough rotating around kind of in an open wave-like fashion that suggests, you know what, we got to watch this carefully. And guess what? The Hurricane Center is too. 90% chance of this area of spin and thunderstorms of a 90% chance of that developing into a tropical depression or a storm in the next five days. The most likely path of this thing keeps it westward for the next uh, five days at least. Here's one simulation from one of the models showing you it moves westward. And unfortunately for areas in Central America, that could mean yet again another landfalling tropical cyclone with a lot of heavy rain and all the hazards that accompany that. We'll have much more on the tropics and Ada coming right up after the break. Breaking news now. This is new video of emergency crews rescuing a family from flooding in Iredell County, North Carolina. Uh, a really uh, a rough situation going on across portions of the Carolinas, especially the Piedmont. Look at that running water. This would sweep you off your feet. This would sweep your car away very quickly. And uh, just look at this water as far as the eye can see. You can tell that this is normally dry ground. You can see the shed uh, washing away now back there. So something that you might think, well, uh, this is sturdy. I could hold on to this. It could keep me from floating away. Not at all the case. That is the power of water, guys. That's why we tell you, uh, turn around, don't drown. Water, especially this much, especially flowing like this, is um, it's very powerful, and it can certainly uh, sweep you off your feet, sweep you away, and that makes it a very dangerous situation. Flash flood warning ongoing still in Charlotte until 11 a.m. this morning, so we've got about an hour and a half left on this. You can see that there, every area uh, outlined in that bright green under that flash flood warning, not just Charlotte, Huntersville, Rock Hill, you're included in this. We've already had uh, several reports of water rescues needed this morning, as well as water over major roads like I-85. We've got that flash flood warning for cities like Gastonia and Mooresville as well, up into Winston-Salem, uh, Raleigh-Durham included in that as well. So we have just a ton, just a wall of flash flood warnings across the Piedmont this morning and into now the coastal plain as well. So uh, really a lot of rain coming down. Here's the problem, guys. It's not in any rush to stop. Welcome back to AMHQ Weather Center Live this morning. It's 29 past the hour. I'm meteorologist Felicia Combs, along with hurricane expert Dr. Greg Postel. Now, Ada dumped a lot of rain on Florida's west coast in the last day, Dr. Postel. And now it's speeding off to the north and east, but we're still not done with it. We are not done with it yet. You're exactly right, Felicia. And we still have to contend with some of the rain it will bring to parts of coastal Georgia, south and North Carolina. But let me take you back just a few hours. We had our additional landfall of Ada, which came at 420 this morning, five miles north northeast of Cedar Key, Florida, as a tropical storm, 50 mile per hour winds, pressure around 996. So it came on board about like that, and now it is just to the north or northeast now of Gainesville, Florida. So right now, if you look at sort of the, well, this goes back really about 12 hours, but you can see where it is right about there, moving toward the northeast, and we'll probably be back out over water Yep, back out over water over the next, let's say, well, six to eight hours or so. Center of circulation, according to the wind and some of the other data that I can uh, accumulate, is right about there. There's Jacksonville, and we're still getting some gusty winds along Florida's east coast. Inland, no, not really. It's really right along the coast. You can even see Lake City, 10 mile per hour wind. That's right near where the center of circulation is. But it's here along the coast, Fernandina Beach on Amelia Island, just a little while ago, was gusting to 40. Now we're getting gusts to 36. But many other locations along Florida's east coast seeing wind gusts of 30 to 40 miles per hour with some showers moving through. There is a slug of moisture here that's trying to work its way northwestward from the Atlantic toward coastal South Carolina. We'll be watching some of that because that may be the contribution that Ada brings to an otherwise rainy day in the region. I think we will see some of that as the circulation around Ada tries to bring some of that rain northwestward into parts of coastal South Carolina and North Carolina. But the big reason why we're going to be getting all that rain in the region, Felicia, is because of the cold front that's moving through. So it's really the cold front, but Ada is just adding a little sprinkles to the uh, cake, I guess, if you want to put it that way. <laughs>
Yeah, Dr. Postel, there's a whole lot of ingredients in this treacherous recipe that we've got going on this morning. Tropical downpour spreading across parts of the southeast and mid-Atlantic. That includes Charlotte, North Carolina, and Washington, D.C. Taking a live look. Uh, man, D.C., you guys had uh, an absolutely beautiful stretch of a few days, and then that rain moved in. Charlotte dealing with big flash flooding concerns throughout the rest of the day. So let's talk about it. Uh, Charlotte, you're not alone, though. There is a huge chunk of the Piedmont even stretching out into the uh, coastal plain that's going to be dealing with that possibility for flooding. Hence the flood alerts that we have ongoing through tonight in some places. We have a flash flood watch as well as a flood watch. So places like uh, Charlotte, you're under that flash flood watch, flood fl flood watch for Raleigh, Wilmington, Myrtle Beach because we have rain falling over the same areas, the same areas that have just uh, really a, a ton of soil moisture above average already. Look at some of these, um, uh, the oranges and the reds that you see popping up. That's five to eight, even eight to 12 inches of rain in the past 48 hours. Uh, the Delmarva Peninsula absolutely soaked and then heading back into places like Charlotte where we do have that flash flood warning. Guys, we have already had water rescues. We have cars stuck in water in some places. We have roads that are underwater. I can't stress enough. You've got to give yourself a little bit of extra time. Pay a little bit more attention as you're heading out this morning in the Charlotte area in uh, Raleigh, Durham, in Winston Salem. It is a very wet out there and it's going to be a rough ride if you're heading somewhere this morning. We've got more on this and we'll talk about the latest from Ada coming up after the break.